today's picks. Let's move on to the NFC North. Starting off with, what did we call them last year? The Brews Brothers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what yeah. it was? Yeah. The Chicago Bears, 12-4 and four last year, to win the division championship this year, plus 200 in Vegas. Their strength of schedule, the number five most difficult in the league, projected. Uh, turnover margin, number three last year. They were plus 12. Pretty good. Head coach, Matt Nagy. Uh, offensive coordinator, Mark Helfrich. I didn't even remember this. Did you remember this? Uh, yeah. Former, or, uh, former Oregon coach. Oregon coach, coach yeah. Uh, defensive coordinator this year. Now, they lose Vic. Big, oh, that's so big, too. But they hire in Chuck Pagano, former Indianapolis head coach. They're a projected favorite in 11 games. They're over-under, 9.5, plus 125 to go over 9.5, minus 140 to go under. Total yards per play on offense, they were number 20 last year. Only averaged 5.4 yards per play. Uh, that's still about average in the league. Yards per play on defense. Now, the Ravens were number one. The Bears are right there with them. Number two, gave up 4.8 yards per play. They signed wide receiver Cordero Patterson, uh, which the only team that's really been able to figure out what to do with him was the Patriots. Uh, but they drafted running back David Montgomery, who looks to take over as starter this year from Iowa State. And they drafted wide receiver Riley Ridley uh, to give him another outside weapon from Georgia. Uh, they signed free safety HaHa Clinton Dix to help shore up a little spot on the defense. He's expected to start as well. I think that this schedule is insanely difficult. Yes, they're favored in, or they're projected to be favored in 11 games. I've got them at nine and seven this year. I think they take a step back. I'm not a big believer in Mitch Trubisky yet. He didn't show me much last year. Like I like the fact that he didn't turn the ball over a lot, uh, and they did bring in some weapons for him. But I just, they, I don't know. No Jordan Howard. No, they, they have to lean on a rookie running back. No, they don't because they still got Tariq Cohen. Tariq Cohen was better than Howard anyway. So Tariq Cohen was the starter last year. You put Montgomery in there. He's better. He's an upgrade than Howard. Do they still have Cohen? Yeah, they still got Cohen. Are you sure? Yes. Put me up with the Bears, man. I like this team. I got them 10 and 6. I like this team a lot. I fought with, with them winning this division. Um, I think they're going to be better on offense. I think they're going to be better on defense. I think this is probably the best linebacking core in the NFL. You know what? You're right. And I, They got Cohen. I'm scared okay. of losing Vic Fangio <laughs> because I know how, how valuable he is. Yes. And I don't know that you could just put another dude back there. I will say that they got a ton of talent on defense. God, and it is insanely talented. The dudes maybe, on the field... Yeah, maybe the most talented defense in the league. This is the most talented defense in the league. I don't know know if there's any question on that. I think this is the best defense. I don't know. I mean, I think the Ravens are really good. I think uh, even even the Jets are are up They're not close to this good. They're just not. They're they're just not. This team is is incredible defensively and offensively. I think they're going to get better. Are they going to be a Kansas City, a a Rams, a Saints offense? No. I don't think Trubisky's ever going to be that. Don't turn the ball over. He's a good mobile quarterback, so he – they're, he's going to help the running backs rush the ball because you, you can't just load the box up. Um, Anthony Miller, our guy from Memphis, oh, yeah. I think he's going to – now he's hurt right now, but I, I think he'll be fine by, team, by the time the, uh, the season starts. He's going to compete. He's going to push Allen Robinson as the best receiver on this team. Oh, yes. If you got two outside weapons that are that tall, that athletic, that kind of speed, with the running backs, you got a dual threat in running back, got a good tight end – I think this offense is going to be better. I think they're going to just progressively get better. Yeah, I mean, Matt Matt Nagy and, and Mark Helfrich, yeah. good tandem together. Oh, I mean, yeah. Nagy, remember, was Andy Reid. Like, it, that was one well, of his guys. But but we don't, he, he, he actually has proven to be a capable head coach and play yes. caller. A lot of guys have left Andy Reid trying to get the next Andy Reid, and they didn't work out. Yeah. Nat, Nagy, and this is not to say that he's going to be the next Andy Reid. And you and I... Both but, kind of agree on on Trubisky. He's doing a lot with a little yeah. in, in our eyes. Now, now Mitchell could could surprise and, and break out. They win this division. I think that defense is going to carry him. I think the rule is is don't turn the ball over. Don't be crazy. Let the defense keep us in games. Let's make field goals. Let's that, win see, games. That's, that's the thing, right? It's so long as you've got a defense like this, 
your number one rule as a quarterback is don't turn the ball over. Well, just don't make mistakes. That's it. Yeah, keep us right? in the game. Yeah, don't don't lose the game for us because defense is going to keep us close. What, what do they call that in college? A game manager. That's right. And that's look, you can make a lot of money being a game manager. Like it's Tom Brady in those early years was a game manager. He won suit. Now he had to drive down the field to get him in field goal position. Yeah. But he won three Super Bowls off three but, kicks. But you know how he did that? Like he didn't turn the ball over. He so, didn't make mistakes. Yeah. He made short, they, easy throws that were safe. Yes. He didn't try to go down the field and say I'm gonna win it on one play. Yeah. Oh, I turned the ball over. Yeah. Damn, Just don't make mistakes. Now we lose. So projected favorite in eleven games. I've got them nine and seven. You got them what? I got them ten and six. We're we're one game different there. Yeah. That's and, and see right there the number is nine and, and a half. And that and that is my still some hesitation with Mitchell. And my love for one other team in this division. Let's move on. I'm willing to bet it's not this one. The Detroit Lions, 6-10 and 10 last year. Division champs plus 1,000 to win the division. Strength of schedule number 15. So right dead in the middle. Turnover margin, they were 24th last year, minus 5. Over under is 7 this year. Their juice is plus 120 on the over, minus 140 on the under. They are a projected favorite in only three games this year. Uh, yards per play, they were number 27 on offense last year. That's 5.1 yards per play on defense. They gave up 5.7. That was good for number 19 in the league. Offense coordinator, Daryl Bevel. He was Seattle's offense coordinator in 2017. They brought him in this year. Uh, they signed, and this is, I'm telling you, it, between the draft and, and what they signed, they are trying to turn this into New England 2.0. That's, that's right. That's exactly he doesn't, what Matt he doesn't make any bones about it. Uh, running back, they brought in C.J. Anderson to go behind on Johnson. Wide receiver, uh, they brought in Danny Amendola. They brought in Jermaine Curse. Uh, they brought in tight end Jesse James. They drafted T.J. Uh, Hawkinson, tight end out of Iowa, who is the most like Gronkowski uh, coming out of this year's draft that you could get. Defense coordinator, Paul Pasqualoni. Pasqualoni. Pasqual- had, you, you would know how to say that. I, I would say Pasqualoni. Um, they signed defensive end Trey Flowers. They brought in cornerback Justin Coleman, both of which are expected to start immediately. Uh, projected favorite, again, in only three games this year. The over-under is seven. I don't see them getting to seven this year. I like Patricia. I like what they're doing. I don't think that you can replicate what New England does. I've got them at six and ten this year. And and I feel like that's a pretty good six and ten. Like, their schedule, pretty difficult. Yeah. Um, but, man, I... I I just, what they do with Matt Stafford, he, they, they rely on him so much. Now, I think they're going to get back to, you know, really focusing on running the football. They're going to run the football this year. But even still, like, Stafford makes some, some crazy decisions sometimes. Um, I, I, think, I think six and ten this year. I got them seven and nine. I'm one game different. Okay. I, think they, I think Vegas gets his number right on the head. Um, they're going to be better conditioned. I mean, he did. I mean, he had like the the team build a hill, like the Patriots build a hill. They run that hill just like the Patriots ran that hill. And that's not. I'm trying to be like the Patriots. One of the reasons the Patriots win in the playoffs and win a lot of one score late games is because they're just better conditioned than everybody else in the league. Yeah. And and it's kind of shocking that other teams don't have conditioning drills the way. Like, I remember in high school, we did conditioning at the end of every practice. Like, yeah. you practice, and then we're going to run. And and we ran up hills, and we ran up bleachers, and we did these things, and it was the whole team had to do it. I'm baffled that in the NFL they don't do this as a team. They, I guess they just leave it to the players to do it themselves. And and a lot of guys just don't. Yeah. So, so I, I think that's going to matter in a game or two. There's going to be a couple of games where they're going to be picked to lose, and they're going to be better conditioned than the other team in the fourth quarter, and they're going to make plays that, that either stop that team from coming back or put them over the edge. I think they're going in the right direction. And, and yes, the best thing they can do for Matt Stafford is run the football some. Yeah. Now, take that pressure off of him. My biggest thing in the NFL, I've been watching this for a long time, Drafting a tight end with your first pick is tough because in the NFL, receivers used to be their third year was a breakout year. Now, rookie receivers still struggle. Second year, those guys can really break out and do some things. You don't yes. really take third years. The offenses in in in, um, 
in college and the schemes in college are, are, are so much like the NFL more now. They're more prepared for it. Quarterbacks, don't take any time hardly at all. You can come in, you can play right away. Tight end, those guys play right away. None of them are ever good right yeah. away. Remember when O.J. Howard got drafted? Oh, yeah. Evan Ingram got drafted. Everybody thought all oh, these guys were going to be studs. It's just not how the game works. It usually now, I think takes Hawkinson three. has a better chance because... He's going to be more of a receiver. Well, it, he's not just more of a receiver, but I, he can block. Like, that's, that's well, no, what yeah, made Gronkowski no, He's going to so be different. on the field, and he's yeah. going to make things... You're right. For, but, but no offense. And he'll, he'll split time, time with Jesse James and... and it's just one of those things where that. when you spend a first-round pick on a tight end, you as an organization, you have to understand that his first two years are going to be learning because... yes. Playing tight end in the NFL is just so different than how every offense in college plays tight end. Yeah. All right, so I've got them 6-10. and 10, You've got them 7-9. Seven, seven and 7-9. And, and I like this team. I think they're going to be yeah. better. Moving on, the Green Bay Packers. 6-10 and 10 last year. Mike McCarthy got fired. Um, did I say that right? Yep. Got the right name? You got it. Oh, I was, I was thinking Mike McIntyre from Colorado. No. That's right. Mike McCarthy. So Mike McCarthy. Right, Mike. He's fired. 6-10. Uh, and 10, to win the division this year, they're plus 190 in Vegas. This number is always inflated. That's right. Uh, strength of schedule, number 18. Turnover margin, they were number 19 last year, or tied for that with zero. They had dead on zero for turnover margin. Over under is nine and a half. To go over is plus 120. To go under is minus 140. New head coach is Matt LaFleur. He was the Titans offensive coordinator. One year uh, as a Titans OC. One year as the OC. He was also the offensive coordinator for the Rams in Sean McVay's first year. Uh, he did not call plays for the Rams, but he did for the Titans last year. Um, which And the Titans offense was bad last year. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't think he knew how to use the personnel. But either way, they are projected favorite in nine games this year. Uh, I don't know what that means because, again, these numbers are always inflated with yeah, this team. Yeah, it's the Rodgers effect. Uh, total yards per play, they were number 13 in the country in offense last year. Uh, 5.8 yards per play they averaged. On defense, number 14. That surprised me. They gave up 5.6 yards per play, uh, just a, a touch better than average. Offensive coordinator is Nathaniel Hackett, who was Jacksonville's offensive coordinator. I was really surprised that they brought him in with as poorly as Jacksonville played on offense. Defensive coordinator is Mike Pettin. Uh, they signed guard Billy Turner. They tried to shore up that offensive line a little bit. They drafted tight end Jace Sternberger, who I think was maybe third best tight end in the draft last year, and they got him in the fourth round. Maybe. Um, yeah. He he He's good. blossomed under Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M. Correct. So led, uh, led college football in touchdown receptions uh, for a tight end. On defense, they signed Adrian Amos, uh, free safety, linebacker Preston Smith, linebacker Zadarius Smith. They drafted linebacker uh, or defensive end, whatever you want. I think he'll fit more linebacker with this scheme. Uh, but Rashawn Gary from Michigan. And they drafted safety Darnell Savage to replace HaHa Clinton Dix. Again, projected favorite, nine games. The number's nine and a half. I think nine and seven works well for this team. Aaron Rodgers, he's still, like, they lose Randall Cobb, but they've still got some wide receivers that he can make better. That's right. Um you know, Aaron Jones still back there at running back. I think the defense, again, surprised me at the number. They were a little bit better than I thought they were. But 9-7, and seven, I think so long as Rodgers is not hurt, I think he's going to be okay. He wasn't hurt last year. Played the entire season. And he did play, and but he, he... Of course. He won okay. six games, and so he's going to say, I played the whole year hurt. Uh, okay. I get that. Okay. I get that. When I do bad, I'm always got an excuse, too. Um, <laughs> here's... I think they're going to be. Here's, I here's the thing. Forget going into these things, how much you hate Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> My problem is this. Okay, I don't think they go backwards at all from last year. I think they stay the exact same because I don't know that Matt Lafleur is going to be a better head coach than Mike McCarthy. Actually, I, I'm almost positive he's not going to be as good as Mike McCarthy. Mike yeah. McCarthy won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Matt Lafleur was the guy that stood next to Sean McVay. And then he went to the Titans, whose offense was kind of going in a good direction and went backwards substantially. Yeah. Like, like not a little, a lot. All right? And, and they had a better offensive line than the Packers do. They had a better um, running back core than the Packers do. Not as good. They don't have, like, a, a, an Adams. But 
probably better receivers overall. Now, not close to a quarterback as, as Aaron Rodgers is, but, but it's just one of those things where Rodgers, Rodgers doesn't like being coached hard, and so they got rid of a coach that he didn't like yeah. and he didn't get along with, and they brought in a guy that we don't know if he likes, and we don't know if this guy's good at all. I do think Mike Pettin is a, is a good defensive mind, a good defensive coach. The defense could take a step forward. I could easily see the offense taking a step backwards. I know it's easy to say Devontae Adams is a stud and Aaron Rodgers is a beast and they're going to figure it out. That's not how the NFL works. Really talented guys get beat all the time because of scheming. If other defenses can come in and know what he's doing and figure things out, then, then it's going to be really hard to win games. I think this division is better. This division might be the best division in football. I think it is the best division in the NFC. And, and I, I just think it's going to be tough. I think they're going to do exactly what they did last year. I think they're going to be 6 and 10. I think the Bears defense is better. I think the, well, I don't know about better because losing Vic Fangio is tough, but they're going to be really good. I think the Vikings defense is better. Um, I think the, the, the Lions defense is going to be better. And I don't think the schedule is very easy. Yeah. I think they'll be exactly what they were last year. So 6 and 10, and I've got them at 9 and 7. Okay, we can do that. Moving on, the Minnesota Vikings, 8-8 eight and eight in 2018. That was underachieving significantly. Yes. We feel like. Well, Divi- yeah, you and I both had them in the playoffs competing yeah. for the Super Bowl. We're not, I had them in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I had uh, them losing to the Saints. To win the division, they are plus 190, the same as the Packers. Strength of schedule is number 11. That is the second toughest in this division. Yep. Uh, turnover margin. They were number 19, tied with the Packers last year, dead zero. So no plus, no minus on that. Their over-under is nine this year. The juice to go over is minus 120. To go under is plus 100. They are a projected favorite in nine games. Head coach, Mike Zimmer. We love Zimmer. Uh, Total yards per play last year on offense. They were number 19, averaged 5.5 yards per play. That was not as good as we expected in the first season of Kirk Cousins. Uh, But Dalvin Cook, you know... he had flashes, even though he didn't play all the time. Uh, their new offensive coordinator, Kevin Stefanski, they have offensive analyst Gary Kubiak, who we also Love. think is going to make a big difference. Love Gary Kubiak. And the quarterback's coach is Mike McCarthy. That's right. So hopefully that will help out Kirk Cousins a little bit. We'll see. They drafted center Garrett Bradbury from NC State to, uh, to help sure, shore up the offensive line. Yep. They also signed guard Josh Klein. To also toss in there. Both of them are expected to start immediately. Brought in defensive coordinator. Well, no, same defensive coordinator, George Edwards. I was going to say, yeah. uh, they been, brought in Zimmer for a while. They brought in defensive tackle Shamar Steven uh, as a backup. Like it, their their defense is fine. Yeah, they, just just yeah, they're just reloading. Yeah, uh, yards per play on defense. By the way, fourth in the league. They uh, they gave up uh, five point oh yards per play. Like I said, projected favorite nine games. Their over under is nine. I've got them going over. I've got them at ten and six this year. Got them twelve and four. Twelve and four. I really like. This yeah, team. you do. I, really I just like I don't this know team. that I trust Kirk Cousins. Don't need that to. much right now. Don't need to. I think they're going to run the football like crazy. If Cook gets hurt, somebody else will take his place okay. because that's what Gary Kubiak does. I think I think they're going to. He's got lot, a good run scheme. A lot shorter, easier passes. He's not going to go down the field. Those are throws Kirk Cousins can make. Kirk is a very um, accurate quarterback when he's throwing easy, you know, passes that are that are that are makeable. He's not going 20, 30 yards down the field very accurately. Yeah. He's just never been that guy. And and I think that's what they were trying to do with Thielen and, and breaking big plays out and just killed their offense. If if Kubiak I know he's not the OC. He's coming in as an advisor and also, but if they can run more of what he has done his entire career, this offense will simplify down, dumb down a little bit. But they've got talent. They've got skill all over it. That defense, you're not afraid of at all. I think this team is really good. I uh, I, I agree with you. I love them. I think they win the division, and my love for them is more than. My trust for their offense and what they can do is more than my trust for what the Bears can do. I can understand that. I can understand that. All right, that's going to wrap up our AFC and NFC North previews. 
Uh, as always, you can go back and download the AFC East and NFC East, so go check those out. Uh, coming up later this week, we've got all of the other previews for the rest of the NFL season. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go over to uh, tunicatravel.com. We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.